This video gives you an overview of transmitter tubes and transmitter sub-assemblies for radar. The radar transmitter generates a short, high-frequency pulse with high pulse power. The following technical characteristics are required of a radar transmitter. The radar transmitter must be able to generate the required RF frequency with the required pulse power. The radar transmitter must have an appropriate high frequency bandwidth. The radar transmitter must generate high frequency power with sufficient frequency stability to enable further radar signal processing. The radar transmitter must be easy to modulate and meet the pulse shape or waveform requirements. The radar transmitter must be efficient, reliable, easy to maintain, and cost-effective, with a long life expectancy. The high power output stage is the radar transmitter's heart, and therefore, this video mainly focuses on the different ways to generate RF power. In pulse radar sets, the pulse power is usually specified in the data since it's used in the radar basic equation. During the transmission pulse with the pulse width tau, pulse power is only generated for a very short time. The sequence of transmission pulses is defined by the pulse repetition period, which is symbolized by the capital letter T. In this graph, the average power would be the even distribution of the energy from the short transmission pulse over the entire pulse repetition period. The ratio between pulse and average power or between pulse duration and period duration is called the duty cycle. The pulse power energy can be stored in capacitors within the power supply. Hence the power supply only needs to provide slightly more than the average power. The crucial factor for determining the range of a radar set is not its transmission power, but the radiated energy which is equivalent to the average power displayed here. This is why a continuous wave radar, with the same average power as the pulse radar, has a range comparable to that of the pulse radar even though the pulse radar may have up to a thousand times larger pulse power. The duty cycle can take on a range of different values. The boundary values are especially noteworthy. On the left side of the animation, we have the classic pulse radar that uses extremely short transmission pulses. On the right side, we have continuous wave radar. All values in between these two extremes relate to pulse radar that utilizes intrapulse modulation and pulse compression. The modulation type used in classic pulse radar, such as the Freya radar from the Second World War, is like Morse telegraphy which involves a keyed carrier. This type of modulation is known as a one among radio enthusiasts. In simple terms, the keyed on-off modulator switches the anode voltage of the tube on and off. The pulse should be as short as possible because the pulse duration influences the range resolution. However, the impulse should be as strong as possible because the impulse power influences the maximum range. This results in the need for powerful transmitter tubes with a very high anode voltage. Radar transmitters are divided into high power generators and high power amplifiers. The first radar transmitters used vacuum tubes as self-oscillating high power generators. These were often planar triodes, tetrodes, or magnetrons. Self-oscillating high-power generators have a major drawback. They start oscillating with a chaotic phase shift. As a result, the power oscillation transmitters are not coherent. This makes it harder to detect a phase change in the echo signal and thus to indicate moving targets. Magnetrons are still used as inexpensive transmitter tubes in weather radars. Here is shown a magnetron from the DWSR 5001C, which is used by the German Weather Service. The entire block diagram of a radar using a magnetron transmitter has already been described in the video about the radar block diagram, Lesson 3. Only the transmitter using a powerful tube as a power oscillator is considered here. 
Power oscillators are modulated by the modulator switching on the high voltage for the transmitter tube for the duration of the transmission pulse. In older radar sets, the clock generator was a simple blocking generator that generated short needle-shaped pulses. However, the length of the transmission pulse was not determined by these needle-shaped pulses. For this purpose, the modulator contained a pulse-forming network that stored the energy and emitted it again as a high-voltage pulse for a predetermined time. A thyrotron, later replaced by thyristors, switched the pulse-forming network between charging and discharging. Amplifier tubes can be used both in a high-power amplifier and as a generator with suitable feedback. The amplitron has a similar structure to a magnetron and can be used as a generator with external resonators of higher quality, for example, and is then called a stabilitron. Traveling wave tubes can also be used as so-called backward wave tubes in a generator mode. With a high-power amplifier as a radar transmitter, it is possible to measure Doppler frequencies much more accurately. Transmitter tubes used as amplifiers include klystrons, cross-field amplifiers, also known as amplitrons, and traveling wave tubes. As a power amplifier type, the radar transmitter uses a highly stable and continuously oscillating master oscillator as the source for all internal clocks and for generating the transmitter's radio frequency. For high-precision instrumentation radars, it can even be synchronized with the time standard transmitted by the GPS satellites. The intermediate frequency and the high-frequency carrier frequency for the transmitter are generated from this basic clock by frequency multiplication. All the clocks and control pulses required for the radar are generated by frequency division and subsequent logical operations. The complex transmission signal with intrapulse modulation is generated in the so-called waveform generator. Here, the desired waveform of the sounding signal is digitally stored point by point in amplitude and phase and is then converted into the in-phase and quadrature signals using a digital to analog converter. The sounding signal at the intermediate frequency is formed from the amplitude, I, and phase, Q information using the process known as quadrature modulation or synchronous modulation. As the radar signal processor is familiar with this signal form, it is also available as an exact reference for demodulation. The radar's sounding signal is mixed by upward conversion to a high-frequency signal. The power amplifier needs to be enabled with a pulse that defines the transmitter's pulse duration. This will prevent generating any additional noise during reception time. Solid-state amplifiers have the advantage that they do not require high voltage. This means that individual blocks or modules can be changed during operation without switching off the radar. Older transmitters still used bipolar junction transistors based on silicon. Later, field-effect transistors based on gallium arsenide were added. Today's standard, however, is transmitter, receiver modules based on gallium nitride. Semiconductors as power amplifiers cannot tolerate very high operating voltages. They therefore use much longer transmission pulses with low pulse power. Intrapulse modulation avoids the disadvantages of long transmission pulses. This makes pulse compression possible and a better resolution is achieved despite the long transmission pulses. To increase the transmission power, multiple semiconductor modules are used in parallel. The partial powers of these modules are added together in phase. This approach has the added advantage that if some power amplifiers in passive antennas malfunction, it only slightly reduces the transmission power but the radar can continue to operate. This is why air traffic control radars prefer to use passive antennas. If active antennas were used, the antenna would need to be stopped to change the broken down amplifier modules. In most cases, radar transmitters are also offered with different power levels so that the user can choose between a range of 60 or 80 nautical miles, for example. 
For the shorter maximum range, the transmitter consists of just one rack. In state-of-the-art air defense radar sets, the antenna no longer rotates. The radar consists of several active phased array antennas, in which individual modules could also be changed during operation. However, this type of architecture is very expensive and is therefore not yet used in air traffic control. In addition to the power amplifier, PA, the controlled phase shifters, and attenuators, these transmit, receive modules also contain a low noise amplifier, LNA, for the receive path, which is protected from excessive input power by a diode limiter. In this wiring, it is still assumed that the down converting and digitization take place centrally after an analog summation of the individual signals. With analog beamforming of the antenna pattern, the individual signals of each antenna element are summed in analog form at the high frequency level and then digitized. With this technology, only a single antenna pattern can be realized per pulse period. In digital beamforming, each antenna element of the phased array gets its own analog, digital converter and the antenna pattern can be generated by digital phase shifting and weighting. Since digital information can be duplicated without loss, many different beams can be formed digitally at the same time. This is only limited by the required computing power of the beamforming processor. In the next generation of radar transmitters, each antenna element will have individual transmit, receive modules that will contain all the necessary assemblies, including the high-frequency assemblies for radar, the waveform generator, and the frequency multiplier, exciter. The only input signal needed is the time standard. With this new technology, each antenna element will also be able to transmit using an individual signal form. Additionally, each element can receive echo signals from every other element and assign them to the foreign radar transmitter and its location. This will result in mathematically gigantic possibilities for virtually enlarging the aperture of the antenna. This new technology is known as multiple input, multiple output, MIMO, radar. It is worth noting that the transmit, receive modules of the latest generation of radar sets are fully equipped with all the necessary radar modules to work autonomously. This opens new possibilities for the scalability of the radar transmitter. However, it is beyond the scope of this video to go into further detail about MIMO radar. Transmitter tubes are still used in radar transmitters, especially in satellites. They are much more robust than semiconductors against cosmic radiation and the plasma flow from the solar wind. A frequent cause of the breakdown of vacuum tubes would be, for example, the loss of vacuum. However, such a failure is not to be expected in space. Satellite-based radar sets, for example, usually contain a transmitter with a powerful traveling wave tube. I hope you enjoyed this video. You may find the Internet Radar Tutorial useful. It has a vast collection of radar set data. Thank you for your attention.